What's up guys, it's your boy Ajax and today I'm breaking down the top 20 cents of the 1990s. We got the RY30. I know what you're thinking. What am I gonna do with this old ancient drum machine? It's got six analog waves, a multi-mode filter. You got that pitch wheel to give you that rolling bass that'll blow your mama right out of her lazy boy. 19. And we got the Roland MC505. Yeah! Perfect synth for getting ideas down quickly. It can be used for arpeggiators, drums, leads, effects, and so much more. 18. The Electron Sid Station. That 8-bit goodness. She's not your average Commodore 64. She's got better highs and lows and less noise floor. Full-size MIDI and quarter-inch outputs. It's perfect for leads, effects, and those gritty 8-bit bass line. Yeah. 17. The Kai MPC 3000. Uh-huh. This girl knows how to get down. Used by Dilla and everybody else in the hip-hop community just because of that swing. I know what you're thinking. She's not a synthesizer, but she's so much more than that. With that juicy filter, onboard compression, and that swing, how could you go wrong? And how could you not like a machine built like a pimp like this? What's up, Roger? 16. The Oberheim Matrix 1000. <sighs> the beautiful black box. The Matrix is known for creating meaty bass lines and lush pads due to its analog filter, which opens up like a chainsaw. Use it with a MIDI editor, iPad, or controller. 15. The Yamaha CS6. And this tank has a lot under the hood. An insane impregnator, massive pro effects section, and a motion control ribbon. The best part of the board is the effects section and the layering, so you can get those nice, warm, ambient textures. 14. The Ansonic TS-12. Bam! It's got that built-in compression and EQ to give your samples that extra thump. One of my favorite features of the TS line is the built-in effects. We're talking pro effects here. If it's good enough for Kanye West, it's good enough for you, bitches. 13. Future Retro 777. Uh-huh. Black and red, baby. The Future Retro is like having a 303 on crystal meth. Excels at leads, punchy bass lines, and she's a looker. 12. The Insonic Fismo. <sighs> I love the Insonic Fismo because you can get some of the wildest and weirdest effects. Sweeping drones, crunchy bass lines, and some serious leads. 11. The Novation Supernova. Yeah. She's got too many buttons and not enough knobs to piss you off. She sounds a little dull, but she's still capable of a lot. Pads, drones, effects, leads, and weak bass. And one of my favorite synths from the 90s, the Korg Prophecy. Prophecy sounds so good, it's hard to tell it's not analog. It's got really good effects, especially the reverb. The layout's not too good, but it's workable. It's got a fat sound, it's perfect for leads, pads, drones, and some crazy effects. Eight. The Quasi MIDI Polymorph. A proper 90 synth that begs to be tweaked. A good layout and a practical synth for any studio. The best part of the polymorph is the four line 16 step sequencer. Nine. Korg Z1. The best features of the Z1 are the arpeggio and the effects section. It excels at pads, strings, bells, and effects work. Seven. Clavia Nord Modular. Funky little guy. Small and petite, but full of potential. Has massive capabilities and sounds great, but it's made for a MIDI editor and VST animation. She excels at leads, effects, pads, and film work. Six. The Microwave XT. That's right, if you're trying to get that Stranger Things sound, well, look no more, because this is the board. It's laden with knobs, and it's a tweaker's dream. The synth sounds a tad digital, but as capable of creating monstrous bass, thick pads, and film work. Five. The Roland Beast JD800. Whoa. Yeah, she's a freaking behemoth and way overpriced. The synth is very cold, but not dull. It sounds perfect for industrial or film work. The board creates original soundscapes with the layering and brilliant bells and leads, but bass is rather weak. We got the Access Virus A. Yes! The coveted synth of the 90s and the breakthrough for Access. The Virus A has the cleanest sound of the virus line aside from the TIs. It's a digital synth but can emulate analog very nicely. It excels at leads, warm pads, 303 lines, and effects work. Bobby and Nordlead 1. Found in all the studios in the 90s, Nordlead 1 was a serious workhorse. The Nordlead 1 is clean like glass. The filter is so analog sounding it's hard to tell it apart. The synth is made for leads, snappy bass lines, effects work, and drones. Two. The Roland JP8000, one of my all-time favorite digital synths. That's right, fresh, not canned. Like the Nord lead, the JP was used like a hooker under the bridge. It was king of the 90s because of the Super Saw. With the Super Saw X mod and dual layers, the JP is a true tweaker's dream. One. We got the Beast. 
the Waldorf Wave. This is the all-time synth of the 1990s. You got that, right? I don't really need to say much because she's the shit. The synth makes the microwave sound like a toy. Think Stranger Things or Blade Runner on steroids. She sounds warm and thick and has enough knobs for three arms. She excels at everything, especially thick bass, warm pads, effects, film scores, and spending your life savings. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe because I need to take my girl out for some cheeseburgers. Hit the bell if you want to feel a tingle in the jingle. Mm. Thanks, I'm out. Peace.